Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I am Gids and today I'm going to be talking about the fragrances I purchased last year. So these are my favourite fragrance purchases of last year. Well, I'm going to talk through all of them and pretty much all of them are favourite purchases because I loved everything that I bought last year. I was quite intentional and really thought through all the fragrances that I purchased apart from one and I have a slight regret about that and I'll talk about that in a moment. But First and foremost, welcome to my channel. I'm Gids. If you've never come across any videos from me, I'm Gids. Hello, I make videos about fragrances. I do some vlogs and I do a little bit of fashion content as well. So I hope you will like it here on this channel and I hope you choose to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Let's kick off with one of the fragrances that I purchased last year, which was, in my opinion, a great purchase. And I really thought this one through. This is Hibiscus Mahajad from Maison Crivelli. Um, so I would say that in the last couple of years in the fragrance community, there was a lot of hype and a lot of talk about this brand and about this fragrance. Um, a lot of people love this, but a lot of people as well just think it's an overhyped fragrance. I happen to love this fragrance and I really did fall in love with it. I tried it a couple times before I pulled the trigger because it's not a cheap fragrance, it's pricey, but I absolutely love this. So this is um, a hibiscus rose. Um, it's, it's so hard to describe this fragrance, but it's a sweet hibiscus rose floral fragrance, in my opinion. I think that's the easiest way to describe it with a lot of sweetness and some musky warm notes in the base. Now I think there's some leather in this, there's some amber, there's lots of vanilla for sure, because it is a very, it's not overly sweet, but there is a pronounced sweetness that comes through in this fragrance. It is, it's beautiful and it's very, very potent. It's very, very strong. Um, you don't need a lot of this. And I personally prefer wearing this with fewer sprays because I think it wears beautifully and it's always going to be there. People will smell this on you, you will smell yourself. So you don't need to overspray this, but it was such a lovely fragrance. I love that slightly herbal, slightly medicinal, hibiscus fruitiness that you get in the fragrance with the rose and the vanilla sweetness that this fragrance has. It's, it's really interesting and I'm glad that I bought it. I love this one. This is from Ormond Jane. I've really gotten more into Ormond Jane, the house of Ormond Jane, her fragrances, her candles. She has so many great scented products, but this is called Tangier. This is a Eau de Parfum. This bottle is beautiful, first and foremost. Look how lovely that is. And this is kind of focused around the note of Mandarin, and it's inspired by the fresh, juicy orange fruits of North Africa. So it kind of gives you an idea. It is a very fresh, juicy fragrance. It's got some rose in this. It's got some like musky sweet accords, some vanilla. It's beautiful, a really beautiful fragrance. There's neroli in this as well. It's it's just it's just a pleasure to wear. It's lovely. It's sweet, but it's fresh. It has a little bit of some sort of hints of spice in it as well. It's very, very interesting, very, very complex and very high quality. So that is Tangier by Ormond Jane. I can't wait to wear more of this. Next fragrance is called Pomelo. This is from Jo Loves. And um, I discovered this brand a while back from sampling lots of different fragrances. This is the brand which is now owned by the lady Jo Malone. So this brand here, Jo Malone is no longer owned by the lady Jo Malone. It was sold to Estee Lauder. She sold it in 1991 or 1994, something like that. And she regretted selling the business. But anyway, she later set up another company and it's called Jo Loves because she obviously can't use the name Jo Malone. This is Pomelo. This is a juicy, fresh citrus um, fruit. It's a citrus fruit. This has some spices, it's got some vetiver in this. It's got something warm in the dry down as well. So there's some woodiness as well. It reminds me a lot of um, Terre de Hermes. It has the same sort of DNA, but this opens a lot sharper. Terre de Hermes has more orange and grapefruit. 
it's still green and has that kind of vetiver touch to it, which this one does. I think this one has vetiver in it as well. And I think, I think there is suede in the base of this fragrance as well, which gives it a warm kind of mm, quality to it. Um, Pomelo is lovely. It's, it's a lovely brand, Jo loves. Um, I feel sad that she lost ownership of her brand, but there's lots to discover from this new brand which is created. I think this has been around for like, this brand has been around for like 10 to 12 years. So I want to discover more of this brand, but I really, I fell in love. As soon as I smelt this perfume, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I went back, I tried it again. And when it came up for a good price, I got it in the 50 ml and it's one which I'm going to wear for sure next year. It's beautiful. It's from the house of Yves Saint Laurent. I picked up YSL's Tuxedo. Really beautiful fragrance. Sweet, slightly peppery, slightly warm. Um, it reminds me so much of um, Dior's Fahrenheit. So if you know Dior's Fahrenheit, if you know that kind of smell, it has a similar type of DNA, but this one is way, way more complex and this one is way better in my opinion but i love dior's fahrenheit as well that's one of my loves um that one has some lily of the valley it's got violet it's got sweetness and this has the same notes as well this one also has violet lily of the valley it's got patchouli in this as well it's got amber it's got vanilla it's got spices but nothing in this is like sharp or overpowering everything is really smooth and cozy and classy it's beautiful tuxedo from Yves Saint Laurent is this is a winner and you know performance is reasonably good people say this isn't a great long lasting fragrance I, I think it's reasonably okay um I can get about six to seven hours which for me is all right um and it's just a pleasure to wear so I'm really glad that I have this in my collection talk about diptyque I love the House of Boutique, I'm hoping to get more into their fragrances this year. There's so many great fragrances from Diptyque that I would love to own, but I'm slowing down and taking my time. This is Le Capital. This is a rose fragrance. I'm a huge, huge rose lover. I love the note of rose. Um, and this is so stunning. This is more of a, if you like portrait of a lady, this is in the same, a similar DNA, but this is much, more wearable. It's a much more wearable interpretation of that kind of rose patchouli fragrance, except this one doesn't have as much spice. It has pink pepper. That portrait of a lady has cloves and it has a lot more warmth. This one is warm, but it's not as, it's more kind of clean and musky. It's a clean musky patchouli forward rose scent in my opinion. Um, at the time, Space NK, which is where I went, was doing 20% off all Diptyque. And it was between this one and Oudwell. I'm gonna eventually get Oudwell, but I wanted, I didn't wanna go too crazy. I got one and this was the one I chose. So this is uh, Le Capital from Diptyque. And as a rose lover, I'm so glad that I have this in my collection. Needs no introduction. This is called Melt My Heart. This is from Strange Love Perfume. I got this in the 15 ml um, for a great price. It was on Harrods website for half price. These little fragrances are very, very expensive. The 50 ml is expensive, the 100 ml is expensive. So when this came up for a really good price, I pulled the trigger. I don't know why, every so often Harrods has these on their website for like 50% off. Um, dark chocolate, cacao, ginger, oud, and uh, it's a very mouth-watering fragrance. Um, that combination of the oud and the, uh, the the cacao makes it so nice. It's slightly bitter, but it's warm, it's sweet. Um, and it has oris butter. That was the note I was trying to remember. It has oris butter, which makes this very buttery and smooth and just really, this is just such a high quality um, fragrance house. They make such high quality fragrances with such good ingredients. So if you like, um really interesting fragrances check out strange love new york but let me warn you they are very pricey <laughs> loewe the beautiful house of loewe very underrated not many people talk much about loewe but i think 
Loewe as a brand are on fire anyway, but their fragrances, their candles, their scented products are amazing. Um, this is Solo Ella, uh, and this is the Ella Toilette. Look at that beautiful colour and that beautiful bottle. It's, it's magic. Um, this is another fruity floral fragrance. Um, there's a grapefruit in this, there's some peony. Um, it's very, very pleasant. It's a very sweet, fruity floral fragrance, but still classy. And you can tell the notes in this are still very high quality and very well blended. Um, it's a happy fragrance. It's, it smells, it smells like a, a nice fruity, sweet shampoo, but not cloying. And I just love the way this smells. I love wearing it. Um, I think that Tangier and these two, will go nicely together. Maybe they could be layered. So I'm thinking about layering these when I wear them. But these are just very nice, fresh, fruity, sweet perfumes to wear. Okay, I'll talk about this one, Vanilla 28. Now, this was a good and bad purchase for me. This was no, Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli 64. My goodness, what a mouthful. Um, vanilla, golden rum, creme brulee, brown sugar, royal oud, sugared patchouli. It's a, it's a sweet, it's, it's a sweeter patchouli heavy dominant take on this one, which is, this one by far was my favorite, uh, Kayali, by far. And it's a much sweeter interpretation of that, much more long lasting, because people complain that this one doesn't last, but I think it lasts a reasonable amount of time. Um, I find this cloying, however, I will try to make it work. Um, if not, I will let this go. I know there's lots of fans of this, so I'm happy to just give it to a friend or family member as a gift, but I'll try to make this work one last time. Um, but there's, there's something in this, a note or something which is a little bit cloying. Anyway, this is supposed to be my best purchases, so I'm gonna quickly move on. I have the Dior en Parfum. Definitely a great purchase for me. I'm really glad that I have this. This is a grown, elevated, beautiful fragrance. I mean, the fact that Dior have this in their main line is incredible. This isn't even their private collection and I just think it can rival so many fragrances from their private collection. The quality in this is beautiful. This is an iris, rose, leathery fragrance. There's some oud in this as well, but you get so much iris in this fragrance. And just look at that dark, beautiful juice. It is, even the color of this, the bottle, everything about this is just, it just screams class, elegance, refinement, which is, which is me. <laughs> it's just powdery, it's sensual. That iris is just top notch. I think this is one of the best iris perfumes ever, in my humble opinion. Um, I love Dior Homme Intense, but this one is just amped up because it has rose and it has leather and it's got an oody touch to it as well. Beautiful fragrance. And this is becoming harder and harder to get. You can only really purchase it directly from Dior on their website. You can't just walk into a counter and see this, which I think is a shame because it means it's slowly going to be phased out. So I'm definitely going to wear this next year quite a lot and really enjoy it and treasure it because in a couple years, this may not be around. Um, Chanel's Boy, again, I'm a huge fan of the House of Chanel and the Les Exclusive range of fragrances. I think this one is, it's just perfection. It's perfection in a bottle. Boy always was on my radar, but I had others that I wanted to get before this, but this is a bit more of a, a citrusy, fresh, barbershoppy take on a classic fragrance but it still retains that Chanel DNA. You know, that kind of aldehyde, slightly musky, tiny bit powdery DNA. Um, but the lavender isn't a pronounced lavender. It's like they've blended it with like all the, the fresh citruses and there's like white florals in this as well, the musks. And it's just a really nice, classy wearing experience whenever I wear Chanel Boy. And, I know I've barely worn it, but trust me, I will be wearing Boy quite a lot um, next year. I'm, I'm actually really happy to have this and 
perfectly balances between masculine and feminine really nicely. Greedy or greedy or another rose fragrance. There's quite a theme going on right now, isn't there? Um, I love rose. I really do. I feel like rose can be blended with so many notes seamlessly and just works very elegantly in a lot of different fragrances. So this one I just love. I love, love, love greedy or I think like there's something really mossy and earthy and a bit sort of sweet but the rose is there and this is just a masterpiece i think greedy or is a masterpiece you know the the rose in this is still there but it's still fresh and grounded by these kind of oak mossy notes and this sort of earthiness but it's done in a very approachable way you know don't be scared if you're thinking oh my gosh earthy earthy notes in this fragrance no this is still sparkly and bright and sweet and fresh and classy and it's totally it's a unisex perfume again i always say everything is unisex where will you like but it is definitely one of the ones which dior has pushed a lot especially last year they did a huge campaign around agree dior and um there's nothing like Greedy Or. There really re isn't. I think it's my favourite from the private collection. Um, overall, I'd say Greedy Or is the one which I love the most. When I would go past the Dior uh, Privé, Collection Privé counter, I would always grab Greedy Or and just spritz it all over me and, and politely leave. <laughs> this is called Jeanne from Ormond Jane and this is such a unique and interesting fragrance. I find that this smells, it's very musky, first of all. If you like really clean, fresh, musky scents, this is one which you probably would like. It's very interesting. It's got some black pepper in this. It's got rhubarb. Um, I can't remember all the other notes in this, but it's, I was in a sample uh, when I bought um, Ambre Royale a while back. It was one of the samples I got. And I remember smelling this and thinking, this reminds me a little bit of Diptyque's Orpheon. It's got that same sort of vibe to it. Um, I think there's nutmeg in this as well, which I actually can pick up something which is spicy and warm, but it's so unique. It's such a unique fragrance. I haven't come across many fragrances that smell like this, that are musky. And yeah, I love Woman Jane. I think she's, she makes great fragrances. Love Fest Burning Cherry. So, uh, Burning Cherry, Raspberry, Praline, Palo Santo, Gaik, Wood Patchouli. And I'll be honest, I forgot about it, but smelling it now, it's a lovely, lovely fragrance. I'm glad that I have this. And I will make use of this. I definitely will wear this. I think Kayali make their fragrances to be layered and to be worn with other scents, which is quite clever in a way, because it makes you spend more money. Um, but I do really like this. I think Cherry has had a big moment in fragrances and I think that's part thanks to Tom Ford. I think who was really doing Cherry before Tom Ford, you know, whether you want to admit it or not. I mean, I wouldn't buy Lost Cherry from Tom Ford personally. I don't think it's worth the price to me, but I have to give him the credit. I think he started the craze. But anyway, this is their interpretation of Cherry. It's a nice version of Cherry. Doesn't last very long at all. It's got very poor performance. Um, it has a kind of cherry liqueur type of vibe to it. That sort of amaretto, sweet, warm cherry scent. So this probably be one I might just wear when I'm at home for me. This is called Relax. I bought this from Marks and Spencers and I'm actually surprised. Guys, I bought this no lie, about three weeks ago, um, when I was doing my Christmas shopping, and I was quite surprised, like trying them out, I was thinking, you know, I'll try out a few of the M&S Marks and Spencers fragrances. So Marks and Spencers, to those that don't know, if you're not from the UK, is a, it's a store which is, it sells like clothing, homewares, it's got groceries as well, like uh, you can buy your food from there, you do food shopping, it's a lovely place to buy food, I love their food. Um, but this one is a very interesting fragrance. It's called Relax. It's got the notes here. It's got uh, lavender, clary sage, white cedar, and amber. And it's just a very, just easy to wear fragrance that just smells so nice. It's just so pleasant. And this was only like 10 pounds. Um, 
I'm gonna get a few more of them actually. I'm gonna get one more, I think, because uh, you know how it is. You always find something that's great, you go back and it's no longer available. So I'm gonna get a couple more. I think you can even get them for cheaper, like six, seven pounds or something um, on Ocado's website. But yeah, it's. Um, I went for a walk the other day and I just sprayed a bit of this on and I could get whiffs of it. And I was thinking, this isn't bad for a 10 pound fragrance. Um, this is called Apothecary Relax. And I spoke about Vanilla 28 in another video, but this I picked up last year and I think it was a great, great purchase as well. Um, but yeah, I I don't know what I'll be buying this year. I think this year I'm gonna kind of take it slow, um, enjoy what I currently have. And I would like to sample houses I've not tried before. You know, I've got a few um, houses on my radar that I want to try. I want to get more into Guerlain and Diptyque. Um, Ormond Jane, I'd like to try more from the house of Ormond Jane. But yeah, I'm going to slow down because I'm running out of space. <laughs> I don't know if you've had that problem, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and spending time with me. Um, leave me a thumbs up if you've made it to the end of the video. And guys, I will see you in my next video. Take care.